There we go. That's a lot better. Flashlight, so I can see what's going on. And we're almost off of there. Oh, there she goes. off there like that. Bearing's still in good shape. Wow. Now I gotta figure out how to get this gear off of here now. Yeah, that thing sure popped, didn't it, when it came off? I was thinking about putting my hand over it, but I didn't know if I really wanted to do that either. Yeah, now I gotta figure out something to get a hold of this gear and see if I can pull it off. I don't know, I don't think that gear puller is gonna pull that thing off of there. Well, let me do a little thinking on this. I'm gonna get this off. I know putting it on is gonna be easy, I'll just put this in the oven. And just slide the son of a gun and tap it back on there. It's just getting it off. Oh. Alright. Put a little heat on it with my cutting torch there and posi lock puller. Good pullers, these posi lock pullers are. So you this guy's uh, this gear here. You only, you know, it's kind of deceiving, you know, just looking at it. The only thing that I can see, there's two edges that are pressed on. The bottom edge down there, which is only about that wide is pressed on in the top edge you can see it right here on the shaft let me get the light on this so you guys can see this but you can see right there that top edge is pressed on and so is that one i tried to keep my i just put a little heat on it with the torch and i put the heat way out here I didn't want to get too much heat close to the shaft, trying to keep the heat away from the shaft. So I heated out here and just kept kind of going out here to try to get my gear hot enough to where it popped. And finally it popped. It didn't take long, really. So now, I think we're ready to flip it back over. 
and then we separate the case on it now. All right, guys. So we got her flopped over. Uh, let me see here. Should have brought my bar over here so I could show you guys that the park brake spacer. I already popped it loose with the heel bar, but just take your heel bar down in here below it and pop that loose and then get a hold of them and there's a seal right in here you'll put a new seal in this park brake spacer right here okay let me get situated because we've got some park brake disc and stuff we need to pull out of there all right so we got that or something to grab that mm -hmm. all right Get one steel plate Pick is what I should have done, but this will work. Come on. I'm not even sure how many of these are going to be in here, but. disc in it. Yeah, quite a morning. I had a 9435 Massey Ferguson Swather and I just I'm sorry, I anything, any of those Massey or Hessen swathers, I mean, they're good enough swathers, but the diagnostics, they're, they, half the time they don't, you know, ADCO doesn't put a damn diagnostic um, receptacle on there, data link, so you can plug into it. I mean, we looked on there, I had a Heston swather, I don't remember what model numbers, but it had a uh, Cummins in it here a couple of years ago that I worked on and I mean God. it wouldn't throw a code you're supposed to turn the key on uh, there's a rocker switch for the road speed and the you know for for field mode and highway mode you're supposed to turn and then you're supposed to turn the key on rock it's supposed to start off in in the highway mode then you move it to field mode three times within five seconds and it's supposed to blink the code with a low pressure oil light well that son of a bitch never would do it neither would this one wouldn't blink the code and it was sitting there running rougher than shit so you, you're like man you know something's wrong with it something's wrong so um ended up ended up unplugging it was missing you know and running real rough it's only a four cylinder had a sisu motor in it so i, I looked at the owner and actually went to high school with the owner and uh, I looked at him and I said look Josh I guess we'll let's just let's just uh, it's got the, it's got injectors in it kind of like a Cummins and a Dodge pickup where it's got two uh, studs on it and then they'll it's got some captured nuts on a wire that uh, that, that you screw on the, the, the terminals so I just unplugged uh, I just unscrewed one at a time while it was running and uh, we got the number three, well, when I unplugged number three, it didn't make any difference. So I knew, I knew that we had a problem with number, with number uh, three. So, what we ended up doing is, is, uh, I didn't, I wasn't sure what kind of voltage was supposed to be going to that. 
and it was kind of by accident. I got down there and I bumped the wire by the ECM, the loom, and the and the motor straightened up. Well, long story short, the the uh, plug-in going into the ECM, the injector harness, right there was bad, and we got a new harness ordered for it. I, I tried to take that Bosch plug out apart, and I don't know. I there's no way I I wasn't going to get that plastic piece of shit apart without breaking it and uh so that's on order so hopefully we second date it so hopefully it'll be here in a day or two we can get that going again for those of you guys that are in warmer country with longer growing seasons we only have three k cuttings a year here that's all we get so time is critical especially this time of the year because pretty soon it'll start freezing and then you got to get the hay up. I mean, you got to go, you know, for some parts, or, you know, for certain situations, I mean, I've seen guys on third cutting go rent another swather just so they can get going. Oh, we finally got them all out of here. Okay. So basically, I'll start this with the bottom. They kind of got a little bit of a, we might replace these because they kind of got a little concave to them. I don't like that. So how many do we got? We got... So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven frictions and steels in there. <laughs> Man, there's a pile of them in there. Well, I'm gonna go lay these on the bench and read the next steps in the service manual so I'm prepared to show you. And we're getting pretty close to pulling this uh, case half off here. Alright, I gotta get these cap screws out of this cover and figure out how I'm gonna rig it. extension there because the under a little crooked. This thing's so expensive I don't want to take any chances with any screw ups. Long extensions will take a lot of your power away. Screwing it up at the 
soft hit. The soft is coming up and hitting it. Pull that one out. There. Then I think I'm going to pull out this one speed sensor over here. I just don't want to screw up speed sensor when I pull it out. Those coils, I mean, they're just, they're not going to be sticking out or anything in there. They're just going into a port that feeds a pack. I should screw up anything there. Those speed sensors usually are pretty close, pretty close to what your, you know, the shaft that it's picking the speed sense signal. You know, if it's got like a, oh, what do they call that? A, oh, I call it a speed ring. A little pickup wheel that's inside there. Sometimes they don't do that; they just make it part of the shaft. But, uh, Anyway, I don't want to get carried away and break one of those off in there. Have to dig it out. Okay, all the bolts are loose. There's a long bolt right here. I'm going to look in the service manual and see if there's something. There's some half inch, looks like half inch bolts here. Back here. I don't know if they're holding anything or not. Well, God hates a coward. Got a little tension on it. Now we're going to further back I guess. He's not picking it up quite straight. We're gonna go further to the back next time. When we go back on with it.
bearings all look really good. Actually, you know, I'm going to set this on this plywood over here. It's pretty damn heavy. Here we are. All right. Some pretty big packs and some pretty big gears in there. That's your output shaft, obviously. See, it's got a little stub shaft here. This little stub shaft. This little stub shaft. We'll see, I'm pretty sure that went on there. Should have, huh? Or, or am I backwards? What am I doing here? Yeah, I thought that went on there. That's what I thought. Or was it this one? Oh, it was that one. Yeah, I'm all screwed up. Yeah, that come off the bottom. Yeah, I'm all screwed up. So, let me see here. What do we got to do? Now we're going to figure out how to get these shafts out of here. See, they make a big plate that goes down over all these shafts and it picks them all up at one time. Takes them out of there. And man, I might have to make something. I don't know how you'd get that shaft. See how that... See how that gear's overlapping that one? Both of these shafts would have to come out of there at the same time. There's no way you get them out individually. This one here, I don't think it'd be a problem. This one here, there's no pack on this one. It's just basically a drive gear is all it is. I know that one will come out. And I know that this one here, I can get this one out. I think I can get enough play. I might be able to just get them all out of there individually. You know, I'm going to try. If not, I've got an idea. I could make a, I've got some half inch big piece of 4 by 8 half inch piece of plate over there. It would take a while, but I would build a, measure all these off, and then cut, you know, make that to where that plate would set down over all these male ends of these shafts and then I'd build a latch that would go right in right in the grooves right here and then I'd tighten the latches down on each one and then I could just lift it put a lift and hook in the middle and lift all shafts out at one time so I don't think it'd be that bad but this is like this is a typical funk transmission funk loves using tapered pressed on bearings on everything so our little bearing tool we made will be pulling all those off and we'll change every bearing in it I'm gonna look in the clutch shafts layout and see which one clutch L is it's probably the one right in the middle but I'm gonna look in there and find that out so I'll be back shortly okay guys so I've got all my shafts according to the diagram in the service manual marked with a paint marker marked them in a couple spots in case I rub a mark off 
Uh, so here's A, here's your input shaft. Okay, this input shaft runs up through here and then that little stub shaft I showed you runs your pump drive that runs your steering pump. So, I mean, it makes sense to have that on your on your input shaft, that way you can actually steer it when the machine's not moving. So, um, so that's A, that's what they call your first stage. B is your second stage. C's third stage, D's fourth stage, E is fifth stage, and E is where clutch L is. So E is where our problem child is. So here's clutch F, which would be our sixth stage, and then our uh, clutch G is our seventh stage, and then H is our output. And what you're going to have on there usually is a directional and a range clutch on both shafts or not a directional, you'll have a speed clutch and a rain shaft on both the shafts. So, um, I think I can actually get clutch E, our problem child, out of there pretty simply. That's actually the one that's not too bad to get to, but we're, I mean, we're gonna do them all. There's no sense in, in going through all this bullshit and not doing every one of them. But I know I can get that one out fairly simple. And then, let's get this one out of here and see where our problem is on fifth stage. See if I can pick it up by hand or if I need to do something different. Maybe I'll put this right here where you guys can see this. Okay. Wow, she's heavy. She's a heavy girl. If I had a little bar to stick up underneath there. gear underneath that or something that I'm not seeing. There's a gear. It's messed with that one down there, but it should come past that. I wouldn't I would think fairly easily. I mean I wouldn't think it would be that tight against that gear down there on the bottom. It's messed with the output and with the with the F range or seventh stage. This one's, gonna, this one's gonna come right out of there. She's heavy. Oh, yep, she's a heavy girl. Whew. Bearing cups, we'll change all these bearing cups. Now, now that I'm looking at this, I don't need to build that big plate. I'll pull this, uh, I can get these out of here one at a time. I know I can. I'm going to pull this bearing off with my bearing separator. And then I can get this shaft here. I think I can get this one here. I'm not picking this one up by hand. I'll tell you that much. Ain't no way. That looks like a heavy bastard. But I know I can get this one out. I think I can get them out in a range of it to where I don't have to build that special tool. But I'm just going to have to keep track of that, which is really easy to do as I'm making a video. I guess I'll just watch my own video to see how the hell I pulled them all out of there. But it looks like to me we're going to have to get our bearing separator. Let's flop this thing over. Oh, I got a solvent blower. We'll blow all these clutch packs off the solvent before we... Ah. That's a heavy clutch pack. So we'll have to separate separate this bearing here pull it off and then uh, pull this gear off here there's another bearing underneath it where this gear here turns on the shaft and here's our clutch pack down here I'm trying to see evidence of uh, you know like burnt well I'm kind of seeing heat checks see the heat checks in the side of the drum this particular one that slipped, I mean, as expensive as it may be and as much money as it co may cost, it's still better off. I think we'll probably end up, the one that slipped, we'll probably end up changing the whole drum out because I don't want to take any chances of a cracked drum and, you know, have a cracked drum or something and screwing me, you know. So I need to get this bearing off here and uh, 
get her pressed off of there and we'll go from there all right maybe you can see what in the hell's going on there I'm gonna try to hold on to this the best that I can It ain't coming off very hard. It's actually not too bad. This is a 20 ton short jack. They sure come in handy, these little short jacks. one pressed on there too it kind of looks like it is that's the th thing with these funk transmissions everything on them is pressed on I mean everything they're just a pain in the ass to deal with they love pressing shit together on them well, I was 8,000 series John Deere's there's hardly anything pressed on I don't think there's anything pressed on them. everything just slides right off so I'm trying to figure out now if my bearing spreader will go wide enough to grab this collar here to pull this off. Well, that's another thing I'm going to have to see about here. Is that it's pressed on there? Sure as hell. Okay. Ugh. Oh, uh, we had to make another plate because our this is wider, so the spread was different on it. And it's coming. Make sure that doesn't fall out of the vise. seal to be there but I don't know what we got going on now. Oh shit. I forgot to take this pair of vice grips off that I had on there holding it earlier. Damn it. There we go. That would probably be the problem. we can go here I can tell this one's going to be one labor intensive son of a gun to deal with it appears to me
we must have some frictions welded to that hub that's what's going on so I need to get this loose that's what's going on it slipped and it's welded those to that hub that's why it's not wanting to come out of there this is the pack that slipped so that's usually where you'll run into all kinds of issues like this and you get one especially with a real high horsepower tractor like this you know if you had a good operator that that sense a little slip and stop but no they, they got to go try it in every gear that slips in and sit there and rev it up and see if it'll you know then the light bell the light finally comes on in his head that there's something wrong most owner operators are independent farming companies that have their you know their the, the guy that usually owns the tractor or He's one of the sons that owns the, tr you know, the father that owns the tractor or something like that, you know. Yeah, I usually don't see this kind of issue with it, but. Uh if you got a power shift transmission, this is eventually what's going to have to do it. They're not going to run forever. Eventually, them rubber seals in there will, you know, eventually they'll rotten out, you know, they'll fail. I still can't get off of there. The thing about being real spread out with this bearing feather that far. That it's just that's these flex more the further you get out there, so kind of makes things a little bit. Oh, probably help if I took my damn plate off, you dipshit. That's why it's not wanting to spread apart. Kind of hard to spread apart with that plate on top. Sometimes I wonder, ding dong. It's like the other day I was sitting there and I asked my kid there, he says, man, I can't find my flashlight. And my kid says, Dad, it's in your pocket. Gosh. This transmission. So everything being pressed together like this is just going to take forever to rebuild. That's why they're so. I bet that's. I bet the parts aren't cheap either. You know, but I bet on a reman you're paying a lot of labor. When you buy that, when you pay that thirty-three thousand of it, I bet half of it's labor. I think funk transmission needs to take a few lessons from John Deere on there. Well, they say that I've heard that Funk Transmissions owned by John Deere. I rebuilt a Funk. This is an 18 speed. It was in a 55 Challenger one time. And I remember everything on it was just like this. It was all pressed together. Okay, I gotta get a screwdriver and pop the snap ring out of this hub here. Alright, so where is the end of the snap ring at? Right there. She's a healthy snap ring here. Alright. Let's see if we can pull the whole cluster of shit out of it. That's what's going to end up happening. Yeah, they're all welded together. As I suspected. 
Okay, yeah, this ain't looking too good here. What do we got here? We've got part of our... Huh. Yeah, she slipped bad. we got another bearing here that's pressed on there. We'll have to pull off. As you can see, though, all our... There's our failed clutch pack. He's all burnt, crispy critter. And all these, all these are welded to the clutch hub. What we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna have to end up getting the new gear, the hub, and everything on it. I'm gonna see if I can get a hammer. This should come off the splines on that hub. I don't know if it, they'll come off or not. Usually when they get this screwed up, they're just stuck on there bigger and shit and you can't get them off. And there's still a bunch of plates down in there we need to get off. Let's see if we can turn that drum upside down and knock the rest of those out. I'm gonna set this over here for now. Yeah, that gear's heavy. Okay. That dang gear in that clutch drum must weigh 60, 70 pounds. Okay. All right. Yeah, they're they're all. I don't know if you can see that. Pretty poor, poor light in here, but. They're all concaved and let me open up this door here, see if I can get some more light in here. Oh, there's our clutch piston down in there. Yeah, well, these are these are junk. Oh! What I'll do is I'll take a piece of plate. And let's see here. Let's where's my posi lock gear puller at? Right here. That one's just these are just roller bearings here. I don't know, maybe Maybe press them together, it lasts 14,000 hours. I guess the guy can't say it's a bad design. It lasted 14,000 hours. They got their money's worth out of it. I mean, with a tractor like this, all it does is rip the plow. I mean, that's all they really use it for. They got a, they got a, like a 36 foot Kello built disc. I don't know if you guys have ever seen one of those. Those discs, those discs are huge, they're heavy. They've got like a, Oh, I changed blades on them for a guy one time. You know, John Deere has their disc, and I think the biggest, the thickest disc blades they have are, if I remember right, they're quarter inch. They're quarter inch blades, and they're 20, 26 or 28 inch blades. Well, this thing had 32 inch blades on it, and they were 5 16 thick, and there was 80 of them. I'm trying to remember, it was like 32 or 36 foot wide or some damn thing. He was a huge son of a bitch. It was an all day deal with me and two other guys changing all them blades. Yeah, it was quite the, it was quite the undertaking. Oh, shoot, that kind of sucks. Let's see here. Uh, let's see if I can do something a little 
different. I don't want to get against that shaft at all if I can help it. Damn it. It's always something. I swear. It's always something. Never ends. I'm gonna have to figure something out to put on there. I don't want to get against that shaft. There's a threaded hole in the end of that shaft. I don't want to get against that with that puller. Screw the threads up on that. So I'm gonna have to get a thinner piece of plate or something. Dirty bastard. Anyway, I'm gonna have to go get my cutting torch. I guess and just cut me a small chunk of plate to go on top of that. That's all I can do. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but that hole is threaded right there. There you go. That hole's threaded, and I just don't want to screw those threads up. I mean, I don't really see that I need the threads for anything. I'm not sure what they use that for, if that's something they hold it in in the machine when they turn the shafts or or what, but I'd just soon not screw it up if I can avoid it. All right, guys, it's about 7 o'clock at night, and I've had enough for the day. i got to go home and... and uh, figure out uh, something for dinner and take a shower and get up about five in the morning and go at her again but I wanted to show you something real quick I got my service trucks full of crap here in the back I got that flywheel and that had the flywheel up there I had it turned for that truck and I got the clutch in the back for it and here's the sh <laughs> that 8200 John here here's part of the PTO shaft I don't know, that's about a two inch shaft. Oh, and here's the other part of it. I've already changed that out this morning. But uh, this bearing here, this bearing seized in the housing. And it just twisted. When it seized, this is the outside. This is where your, this is your 1000 spline PTO shaft here. So it seized in there. And when it seized, the clutch pack and the tractor kept trying to turn the PTO, and it just basically twisted the shaft in two. And I uh, talked to the owner, and they had uh, they had uh, made this um, chopper. Had uh, they put like three eight-foot choppers, and they had welded them all. You know, they kind of fabricated their own fixture for mounting all those Verissimo choppers together. And it was like 24 foot wide, and they're, that's what they're going to chop their harvest plants for there, and they were out there trying it for harvest, their little invention, you know, and and uh, I seen this tractor here, and I said, you've got a problem. I mean, usually, you know, if a driveline, if you got a driveline problem with your, with your three, with your PTO, usually the shaft will snap out here on the, externally. See, this is inside. When I seen that bearing and seen what this one did, I said, you've got a driveline angle problem. So I walked out there and looked, and sure as hell, I mean, they had the, the gearbox on that chopper setup they had built too high. And I said, you can't do that. You've got to drop that down and get you a little bit less of an angle. You're putting so much tension on that outside bearing that it's just gonna, it's going to happen again if you don't change that. So he... He did, he had his fabricator cut all that loose today, he says, and they were dropping it down, so... You have to find out a lot of the stuff when these guys start building their own machinery. You gotta find out, you know... I used to build a lot of it myself, and, and I know I'm not criticizing them because I... Trust me, I, I screwed some shit up. You know, that's the way it is when you're fabricating stuff and you're building stuff and trying new things. I mean, you try and fail, try and fail, and then you finally try and succeed, so... Uh, but, uh, you know, you, if you're doing this line of work and they're fabricating their own stuff behind it, you got to go see what they're doing. So that way, if they snap another PTO shaft off, I mean, that shaft is 500 bucks. 
so the owner didn't go well that son of a bitch broke again you got to come out here and fix this and no uh not going to do it you know I, I need to know what broke that shaft and then when i seen that and then he's a good guy he he wouldn't do that to me anyway but uh anyway guys so i thought i'd show you that pto shaft out of that 8200 all right well i'm gonna put all my crap up and head out of here talk to you later